Kelly here. I am so incredibly happy to be back here doing some sitting down talking videos for you guys. As you may know, if you've been following along on the past, uh, I guess, a month and a half, almost two months of the channel, there have been some great adventures. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for following along and following along in the travel diaries. I really appreciate your positive feedback on them. They are my most favorite video to make. I know they're not the most popular and there are a few of you who are like, I miss your sitting down talking in videos. But I feel like my my travel videos are when I get the most inspired and the most creative. So I really want to just give you a big thank you for following along in my adventures, being supportive, and just being amazing friends. And I was so happy to, to take you all with me on my adventures, and I hope that you enjoyed them as much as I did. So in regards to the adventures, I had asked you all on both Snapchat and Instagram to ask me any travel questions that you have and I'm happy to answer them all in a travel Q&A. So we have a lot of questions here and as you know I can be a little bit chatty so let's get started. Alright so I just want to start off by letting you guys know I am in Toronto, Canada right now. I'm going to be here for a little while longer and we're going to adventure Canada a little bit and then we're off on new adventures. But I'm going to recap the past month and a half I guess of travel so that you get a little bit of an idea before we get into the Q&A if I start referencing places or, or experiences. So we started off in Greece and we visited three islands. We visited Corfu, Mykonos, Santorini and then we also stayed in Athens and for that portion of the trip I was with my friend Jen who is like my sister. And I'll be sure to link all the travel diaries below, so if you want to go check them out again, they'll, they'll be down there. Next, I moved on to Portugal, and this was a solo portion of my trip. And I spent a week in Iricera, and I did some surfing, and had some amazing beach time. And then I spent a, about a full day in Lisbon before heading off to Morocco, where I stayed in dreamy Marrakesh, which was... Just a total dream. I don't really know how else to describe it. If you're following along and saw, I, uh, I fell in love with Marrakesh. And then after Morocco, I went to Spain where I spent a few days in Barcelona, jetted off to Ibiza, and then back to Barcelona again before heading back to the love of my life, Italia, where I spent some quality time with my friends, Steph, Dan, Charlotte, and Ryan, and we did Cinque Terre, Firenze, and then I was back in Rome for a short period of time before heading back to Canada. So let's get started right into the questions here. My first question is, how do you make friends so easily while traveling? Do you think it's possible to make connections with people while traveling if you don't drink? I don't enjoy drinking and I also live so simply and don't eat out. In a lot of your videos and snaps, you're usually going out for drinks or eating with people. I'm fine with people drinking around me, but they usually have a problem if I'm not drinking. Any advice? So definitely you do not need to drink to make friends. You don't need to drink to have a good time. When you're traveling, backpacking more so, and you're looking to meet friends if you are solo traveling, I definitely recommend staying in hostels. So like I mentioned in my Alone in Amsterdam video, I said a great way to meet people at hostels is in the communal kitchen. So that requires you to buy your own food and make it so you're not necessarily eating out. I personally really like to eat out and have conversations with people. I feel like eating is part of my cultural experience. That's why I like to travel. I like to try the different foods, different spices, things like that. So so that's personally what, what I like about travel, but if you're definitely somebody who just likes to sightsee, but would rather cook your own meals, and, and not drink and say not spend money on those types of things. Hostels, there's common areas. Everybody has a story who's a traveler. So that's the wonderful thing about hostels is once you guys start talking about traveling and adventures, you're going to hear the most amazing stories. I definitely say don't, don't let that uh, deter you from traveling. In fact, it will work in your advantage because you'll probably make more of an effort when you do run into people in the hostels. And I'd say that how I make friends so easily is I always uh, like to, to say hi. I like to smile at people and just create like an open environment to making friends. When I went backpacking by myself through Europe when I was 20 years old, this really helped me break out of my shell because I was traveling solo and I stayed in hostels and I had to put myself out there to make friends. This meant like signing up for tours and maybe not knowing anybody but then introducing myself when I got there. So. The more that you kind of step out of your comfort zone and say the first hello, the easier and easier it will get. The next question is, how do people dress in Italy? I want to know what to take for my time abroad from September 7th to December 2nd. So I'd say, first of all, don't worry, don't feel like you have to dress like the Italians to be there. Wear whatever you would like, but during that time, 
it is going to be very warm. So I remember last year when I was in Roma in September, October, I was still going to the beach and going swimming. So it's very much like summer weather then. I'd say actually I think September was my favorite month in Rome because the tourists started to leave a little bit and I got to experience the leaves starting to change at the end of the month but it was still very warm and I could still wear dresses all the time and it's lovely when you can walk around in the evening and not worry about getting cold. Pack light and pack whatever you feel most comfortable and confident in. Next question. What makes me anxious in traveling is my money to get it stolen. Did you experience anything similar to that and how did you deal with it? I want to bring up a quote here and this is a quote by Mark Twain and it is, I've had many worries in my life, none of which have ever happened. Don't let the fear of having something get stolen or, or the fear of anything deter you from travel because there's going to be so many wonderful opportunities waiting for you. It's all about stepping outside of your comfort zone and challenging those fears. So I'd say I didn't, I have never fortunately ever had anything stolen from me, but I'm very conscious of my belongings. I only chose to stay in places where I knew that they had secure personal lockers and whenever I'd say leave the room to go to the bathroom or maybe just go down to the lobby for a minute, I'd be sure that everything was locked up. So I'd say just be conscious of your belongings. I never took out more than I'd say 200, 250 euro at a time. And I'm just always conscious as to where my things are and make sure that I, I never got you know drunk to, to lose these things or misplace them. The next question is the best apps and sites to find cheap flights and good quality hostels. Any apps in general you like to use to help you out and what do you do with your money electronics and papers to keep them safe, any general hacks, tips, and tricks. So I actually did a video on my 30 best travel hacks and tips, which I'm going to link below because I think it's a pretty good video. I definitely touch on booking things for your flights, sites to use, my favorite apps. So I'm going to leave that below. I definitely recommend checking it out. And coming up very soon, I'm going to give you guys a very kind of detailed video on how I plan my backpacking routes through Europe. So all in all, like you can have a, a trip in your mind, countries you want to go to. And when it comes to the planning booking process, I think it probably took me a maximum of three hours to do the research to book things and, and the order of which I book, say, accommodation or flights first. I'm going to cover all that for you very soon, so hopefully that will answer more questions. I have an, another Italia question here. So any must-eat Roman dish and must-drink Roman drink? So um, I exclusively to Roma, I know that there are dishes that I don't necessarily eat as a vegan, but I'd say if, if you're going to Italy and if you're going to Roma, the one thing that I definitely recommend indulging into is the aperitivo, which will mean that you'll have probably some, some olives and an Aperol spritz, which is the orange drink. That is Aperol Prosecco and occasionally a little bit of soda. And I'd say anything with tomatoes. You guys know I'm crazy about those Italian tomatoes. Roman artichokes though, Roman artichokes. And yeah, I don't, all the food in Italy is so good. There really, there really is no going wrong. I'd say if you're in Roma, especially if you're going to eat out, definitely just head into Trastevere and you are going to find just so many amazing places and just an amazing ambiance there to have uh, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So next question is, has traveling and seeing new places changed your outlook on your life in Rome? Oh, every trip changes you. It's amazing what happens and how every trip is so transformative. I can definitely tell you, as if you probably watched in the Barcelona video and I had that heart-to-heart -heart with you guys, Italy is home. Italy feels the most like home. When I was going back to Italy, I was so excited. Whenever I go back to Roma, whether it be I just escaped for the weekend, like when I was living there, I just felt like I was coming home. And especially now being back in Toronto, my heart yearns for Italy. I, to be honest, I'm having a little bit of a difficult time adjusting here. I know happiness is from within and has nothing to do with your surroundings, but I just feel like Roma is where I'm the most inspired. Roma is where I just, I don't know, I feel like every day is magic over there and I'm missing Italia already and I guess, I guess more on my future plans coming soon, but I'd say all it did was made me realize how much I am in love with Italy and and how much I know now I'm going to do whatever it takes to stay there. <laughs> and, and the next question is a very popular one. It is, how do you afford to travel so many places? I know you have many avenues of income, but it seems so expensive. And also, how do you budget, save, and pack for long travels? So basically, this comes down to being a digital nomad and minimalism. 
So being a digital nomad means even though I was traveling and having these amazing times, I was working every single day. So sometimes this meant getting up at 5 a.m., putting in four or five hours, or maybe even, like I told you in the Barcelona video, I spent my first three days in Barcelona in a coffee shop working. I didn't get to go get to see anything spectacular because I really just needed to hustle and get a few things done. So that's that comes with a balance. You have really have to manage your time well, and that's the reason why I could kind of afford to to do this. I did have the trip planned, well not planned specifically having things booked, but I knew that I was going on this trip a year before it happened. So I had that in mind, so I was consciously you know, saving, budgeting for that through the year and keeping an eye out on where I would like to go. And then I did work as I was traveling, so uh, I'm very grateful for that and definitely a lot more digital nomad content coming soon and more content on minimalism because I feel like those videos are the ones where you guys get a lot of really inspirational content from. It's something that I love talking about because it's done many wonderful things for my life. So more on specifics coming soon, but that's how I was able to do that is I was working the whole time and I absolutely loved it because I feel like it doesn't matter if I'm working seven days a week, you know, three, four hours a day when I can get the work done in the morning and then totally relax and be able to enjoy beautiful scenery. It definitely inspires me and refreshes me so that every day when I'm going back to work on my laptop, I am just uh, excited about it because I feel like I have maintained and, and have found this very uh, good balance in my life. The next question is, have there been instances where the law of attraction has helped you during your travels? Yes. Yes, hands down. There was every single day. The law is always in motion. As you know, it's always working. So try to keep your thoughts and your vibrations high all the time to attract the most wonderful things to you. There was definitely people that I met, places that I stayed. I was able to attract very many things and there are too many to just give you examples of but basically very much um, everything happens for a reason moments were prevalent and as they always are but more so when you are solo. I feel like when I was traveling solo is more so when I'm in tune and I can pick up on these things and I can read into them and I can spend time focusing and visualizing and it's truly uh, priceless. So. If any of you are out there debating a solo trip and if you have questions in your mind, questions like what should I do with my life and I don't know where exactly I'm going or what, oh, sorry, what path is right for me, etc. Just a, a trip alone, a trip alone will grant you so many more answers and answers for questions that you maybe didn't even know that you had. If you've, if you've been on a solo trip, you know what I'm talking about and if you haven't yet, start planning yours. <laughs> Next question, has any language barrier affected your travels or did you stay in places where English was spoken too? So Europe, many people do speak English, but I'd say I love to travel to the places where they don't speak English because it challenges me. Before going into a country, so I'm gonna give you an example of Portugal because I wasn't familiar with the Portuguese language. Before I went, I'd be sure to you know, no hello, goodbye, please, thank you, and can you please help me? So figure out what phrases, like for example those, that you would like to know or you think would come helpful because when you can learn those it's uh, it makes traveling more rewarding and also the locals and people who do speak say Portuguese they really enjoy that and my first couple days in Portugal in Iricera when I took a surfing course I remember each time when I would go back to the instructor I would ask him to teach me a new Portuguese word so I would surf in and think of that Portuguese word in my mind swim back out paddle back out to him say that Portuguese word I just learned and asked for a new word so I, I made games and <laughs> it was fun for me and I think he thought it was pretty entertaining too so I'd say when you are in a new place take the time to learn the language because it will just grant you all the more positive cultural experience for yourself the next question is, did anything bad happen while you're traveling and if so, how did you react and what did you do? So I feel more and more I get to know myself every day and more and more through trips I get to know myself a lot better and I'd say there's no bad days anymore. I feel like I'm so content in my life, I feel like the main thing just being I believe in myself and I believe in the power of positive thinking so nothing bad ever really happens. I mean. God forbid anything getting lost or stolen, but in in regards to little mishaps, like say if something happened at the airport that was unexpected, I don't let it affect me because I don't react to it. I, I believe everything happens for a reason and if something unfortunate or, or say bad happens, I choose to look at it through a different lens. 
So I'm going to give you a little example. It's not anything on my travels, but this camera that I'm actually using right now fell off the tripod and broke in Roma and I couldn't figure out oh I like I haven't attracted something like this into my life in a long time like this makes me all the more stressed and I stopped and rethought about this situation in a different light and I was like why do you think that the universe say made my camera fall off the tripod and break and that day I was planning on busting out eight videos and doing all this other work and I realized that that was probably a sign from the universe to slow it down a little bit to take it easy and just relax. So I put the camera away for two weeks or a week and a half or something. I thought it was broken. Trust me, I turned it on, the lens was all blurry and I was like, oh man, that's that sucks. <laughs> but then I thought about it and I realized, you know what, I'm pushing myself a little bit too far right now. I'm stretching myself a little bit too thin. And a week and a half later, when I was deciding, oh, what should I do with this camera? Like, do, how do I recycle this uh, camera in Italy? And I turned it on and it worked perfectly. So. I don't know. The universe works in mysterious ways, but I think that anything unfortunate, you need to maybe change the way that you look at it and see it as everything as a sign and try to find the positive light in every situation. The next question is, what is the main thing you can't forget to put in your suitcase? And also somebody asked, can you show us what's in your backpack and suitcase that you've been using for this trip? So I've actually downsized everything into like I live out of a suitcase. So I'm definitely going to show you guys very soon. I have refreshed my wardrobe as you may see my new dresses and things. So I'm excited to show you all that and explain to you how I chose to obtain new things but also minimize in other ways. I'm going to show you how I pack my suitcase so I feel like I've got it down to a little bit of an art. <laughs> so content on that coming soon. But the one thing I can't forget to put in my suitcase is of course my electronics. So that's my laptop, <laughs> that's my, you know, that's my work, that's my passion, that's where the things happen for me. I know it feels a little bit too connected to say my laptop is like my number one, but uh, yeah, that's it because I feel like that's how I work, that's how I get things done, it is my baby, so yeah, my laptop. <laughs> what do you do in the airplane when it's a long flight to pass time? So I actually like really love to work in airports, I feel like I'm the most productive on my laptop in the airport, and also on the airplane I love to work, I feel like it's definitely time to be productive. So for example on this flight that I just recently had from Roma to Toronto, it was 9 hours and I didn't have a plug in, so my laptop only has about 3-4 hours before it passes out when I'm making like a video. So I think what I did was I edited a video, but also I like to take the time to listen to music and positively visualize what I would like to see on the other side. So I think that that's a cool exercise that you could do too. If your next vacation is a beach vacation, maybe put on some nice tropical music and visualize like cool experiences or just yourself being happy on the beach because I find that that can be very rewarding and it can also help you manifest amazing things on the other side. The next one is, how do you stay safe while traveling and staying in hostels? Tips for finding good hostels. Definitely on that 30 best travel hacks and tips videos, I explain what I use and how I kind of pick the best hostels. I'd say definitely read reviews and pick out what's important to you. So for example, for me what's important in a hostel is that they have good Wi-Fi, they have good ratings, and they also have private lockers and that's how I keep everything safe. The next question is, my brother and I are planning our trip to Europe and would love some advice. We'll be going to Greece, both of our number one must-see places, and we are wondering which off-the-beaten-path places you would recommend. Things that may not necessarily be touristy, but more authentic to Greece. I love your travel diaries and all the videos you make. Thank you for taking time out of your busy life to share these memories with the world. You are so incredibly sweet, and thank you so much for this amazing question. I'm wishing you and your brother all the very best. Greece is incredible. Greece very dear to my heart, very drawn to Greece. Still, I have so much to explore in Greece. I've only, you know, just lightly scraped the surface. I'd say I love the island of Corfu. It wasn't as touristy as say Mykonos or Santorini, so that's uh, one reason why I was was drawn to go to Corfu again. I'd previously visited when I backpacked before. It's a very lush, green, uh, just beautiful. And I'd say, in regards to those off the beaten path moments. What you need to do is you need to talk to the locals. That's when learning their language comes in handy because when you could be in Greece and say Eferesto, they appreciate that because I'd say that um, Eferesto, or if, hopefully I'm saying it right even now, but I think it's less common for them than say in Italy people are like grazie, grazia, or when you're in Spanish, gracias. Like I, I feel the more that you can learn their little bits of language, 
put that in, ask them, ask them for their recommendations. That's when you find those special moments. That's when you find those special restaurants, those special places to go see. Ask them what they love about their country and their city or their town. And that's when you find the moment. So whether it be in a coffee shop, whether it be in a bar or any spot for lunch or even on the beach, I'd say just ask the locals and you'll find some incredible places. That's how I find my incredible places anyways, or my special moments. Next question is, do you go on runs or any kind of exercise while traveling? So when I'm traveling, I'm always out and about doing things besides when I'm in a coffee shop typing away. But I'd say uh, I did bring my runners. I did go for runs when I could. Definitely love to swim. Definitely love to surf. So I'm always active on vacation, and that's how I kind of stayed fit. I know I definitely didn't do as much exercise as I normally do, but, um, you know, you get back in the routine when you get back home. Not too much to worry about. My first trip backpacking Europe, I was training for my first half marathon, so I was more conscious about getting those runs in, getting the timing in, and it's possible. I mean, I have friends who like to drop into yoga classes in all the different cities, so whatever is important to you, you'll make it happen, and I'd say that's why I keep active, is I just am always doing things. And next question is, do you want to be a mother one day? Would you give up traveling or take your baby with you when they're old enough? Definitely will never give up travel. Travel is like my fuel. <laughs> it's my inspiration. And definitely when I have a child one day, which I hope to, I hope to be a mama one day, I will take my baby traveling, of course, when they're old enough. And I definitely want to show them the world and, of course, open them up to uh, the many different cultures and experiences. And, yeah, I, I hope they love traveling as much as I do. <laughs> my last question here is, do you think you'll ever live somewhere else for a while like Morocco? I'm definitely living somewhere else for a while, but that news is coming, will come soon. But that being said, I need to call out Kim. Kim, I'm wondering if you're psychic because in one of the travel diaries you left a comment that is leading up to my next big piece of news for you guys. And there's a few of you who also said similar things to Kim. I'm so grateful for all your positive comments. and. Sometimes I feel like you guys know things, <laughs> like you're like you're psychics, or maybe maybe I just vibrated off or something. But news coming soon on my next move. That being said, I guess I'll let you guys know we're only in Canada for for a little while. If you follow me on Snapchat, I feel like I drop hints here and there on on where the next move is. But yes, um, to be continued. <laughs> but I would love to live in Morocco. Oh my goodness, Marrakesh stole my heart. I cannot wait to go back to Morocco. I'm hoping to go back there sooner than later. I mean, hopefully like extra, extra soon. Uh, I don't want to, to say anything, to give anything away or anything that isn't booked. I'd rather, I'd rather not talk about it. I'll speak about it when it happens. But hopefully Morocco very soon. I would love you, you know, I'd love to live in Morocco. Yeah, definitely would love to live in Morocco for a little while. Well, I do live out of a suitcase, so, you know, <laughs> we'll see wherever wherever the wind takes me. Anyways, that's my last question for here. And if any of these talkings or questions brought up any more questions, feel free to leave them below because I'm definitely going to be rounding my content schedule out for the next month. Lots coming on being a digital nomad and minimizing your life. So especially questions on that, ask them below, hoping to answer them very soon. So I love you guys and, and thank you so much again for coming on my adventures and I can't wait to share all the rest with you and I hope that you are excited to follow along. Anyways, I, uh, I love you and I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!